Ladies and gentlemen, guys and dolls, cats and chicks, this is Johnny the Capo with our show Viva ENT. I'm here with my co-host, Mr. Devin the Dude. Devin the Dude. Yeah, how do you go? And Devin is a young dude, by the way, and the greatest producer in all of Seattle, Mr. Hey, it's Eric. C.C. Ryder. Woo-hoo-hoo. He was satisfied, baby. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so here we go. We got uh, another Viva ENT uh, show for you. And, of course, today's show is a special tribute to the late and great uh, Dusty Hill. From ZZ Top, the bassist. The bassist from ZZ Top who... Uh, uh, Sang. Also handled some of the vocals. And yeah, played guitar in some of the tunes yeah. as well. Yeah, he was uh, something something else. This guy, and of course, I want to say hello to all our um, members of our group, Viva ENT Talk Radio Rock Pop and Soul. We're at about a thousand seventy ish. Thousand seventy four. Last time I checked. Very cool. And um, on on the second half of our show today, we're going to have a uh, Daniela. From Oi Hut um, uh, Bay, Oi Hut uh, Ocean Shore. Uh, <laughs> excuse me, Ocean uh, Ocean Shores. Not, it's, it's a, it's oh no, o- Seabrook. Well, it is an Ocean Shores. There's a particular name for it. I think it's called Seaside Village. That's what it is. That's right, Seaside what's, Village. What's that T-shirt say? <laughs> it says Seaside Village. That's right. That's what I was trying to get at. Uh, so, uh, Ocean Shores, uh, Oi Hut Seaside Village, which. Um, uh, Daniela is going to be on the show. She's been on before, and we're going to talk about uh, all the great things happening at Oi Hut, the Oi Hut Grill, uh, the amphitheater, uh, the plaza, and the whole ex- the whole Oi Hut experience. And the shows you're playing out there, like August 14th and, and September 4th, which is Labor Day Saturday. I, b- I believe it's uh, the fourth. And of course, uh, I do want to plug that I'm down in Ocean Shores, and I'm doing karaoke every Wednesday night at Growler's Alley. A beer garden. And if you want to see this, it's on our uh, YouTube channels, uh, VNT yeah. e. Studios. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. I, matter of fact, I had a, I got a nice acoustic set that uh, that's that's on Viva ENT Studios. So. And uh, my channel is Devin Chrysler Studios. If yeah. uh, you have a band that uh, you want videoed, uh, call me up two zero six two two five one zero zero four. I'll try to make it. I'm I'm doing about four shows a week now. So that's cool, man. I'm um, including today. Uh, there's going to be a show. What one are you doing today? Uh, I'm videoing after this show. I'm going to go to uh, the Fun House. Oh. And uh, I'm going to see some bands like. Uh, um, there's a uh, Creamsicle and okay. Space Whales and Nice to Be Pretty. Wow. And then tomorrow, August sixth, the a Moon is Flat, Sun Tunnels, and Donna Party are playing at. Daryl's Tavern in Shoreline, my, my hometown. Yeah, cool. Uh, and then Saturday, August 7th, uh, uh, free to the public, the Duwamish River Festival is uh, pl- is having um, the Harper Conspiracy at 3.30. I'm going to be videoing there. Very cool. And uh, Friday Night in Jazz at Harissa's Mer- Mediterranean Cuisine, 9 to midnight. So. Music is uh, alive and well in Seattle and in, in, in the state of Washington, so that, that's, that's great. That, I mean... It's it's fabulous that we're we're back in action. Yep. Even yeah. jo- even Johnny the Copple back in back in action. So uh, enough about that. Let's let's talk. Let's get into our um, our group a uh, uh, featured group today. ZZ Top, especially Dusty Hill, and of course there's a great documentary. Is that on Netflix? Yep, it's available on Netflix. Uh, ZZ Top, a little old band from Texas. Yeah, and what a little old band they were. And Dusty Hill is uh, one of the three members. That actually starts the documentary off by saying that his biggest influence was Elvis. Yes, and, and he had everything Elvis. He had a, a, a whole, whole wardrobe he would tour with. He had, he had he had a shrine. Of, he's got a shrine of Elvis, basically. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and you know uh, one of my uh, favorite songs that uh, ZZ Top did was "Viva Las Vegas," and they actually charted pretty well with that, and it was and they did a great job on on oh, that song. Could we hear a sample of that, Eric? Or? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure Eric can dig up a sample. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, sample some of the uh, deep cuts that they had because they had a big library of 
of tunes. I mean, yeah. you, you know, give me some loving, you know, the tush. Right, legs. Yeah, I do give me all your loving and sh- sharp dressed man, by the way. Yep, sharp dressed man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Waiting for a bus. I've been doing Give Me All, me, all, me, all Your Loving for years. It's a great song. You know. Oh. oh, Viva. This is really an outstanding job. And it charted uh, pretty good. Got to be dusty on the vocals, I would imagine. Waiting out there, all living. Yeah. I'm going to start doing it their style. A little more rocking? Yeah. Yeah. The okay. video featuring the ghost of Elvis in this. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great it's a great video. It's a great tribute. You know what I'm, I'm struck by listening to this is, you know, their image is very, uh, you know, kind of like three hillbillies from uh, Texas, you right. know, with the beards. And uh, incidentally, of course, the, the one guy without a beard, the drummer, Frank Beard. <laughs> I always thought that was hilarious, you know, that the he's the one guy that goes clean shaven when his name is Frank Beard. But anyway, uh, their sound, um, elements of classic rock, obviously, there and kind of and boogie and rockabilly and all that stuff. But they really put it through a modern filter. You yeah. know, that backbeat is a really like a driving electronic beat. You know that they've got backing them up on a lot of the songs you know they embraced uh modern production for sure yeah i think even though they started in 69 i think that uh that sound that they had that triplet type sound filled up the trio and and i really think that was uh, uh the their success as far as you know having the guitar bass and drums uh have that big full sound mm-hmm. they, they had a full sound and uh and they're considered the uh, longest-running American band without any members changing over wow. 50 years. And, Until and, now. And that's why, Eric, I always like to play with a trio. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's been replaced by Elwood Francis, their uh, guitar tech, uh, in line with Hills Whistlers. Oh, ah, cool. Uh, could we hear uh, Brown Sugar? Sure. Off and, their first album? And you pointed out they're touring this year, actually. And aren't they coming... Uh, yeah, they're soon to, uh, I think, Marysville, right? Yep, they're coming to uh, Marysville uh, uh, August 19th uh, at the uh, Tulalip Amphitheater, uh, but tickets are sold out, so um, good good luck getting in there. Yeah. If you got a ticket, yeah, you're lucky. Yeah, imagine now especially. Yeah, especially now. Well, here's a live version of Brown Sugar Bill. from ZZ Top. That's a good Top. version, yeah. My friends, they all told me. Just so you can I, kind of hear the differences between, you know, the very uh, produced right, stuff live. of like uh, Viva Las Vegas and this live. It's from 71. My friends, they all told me. Man, there's something going to change your life. <laughs> kind of lazy. Gotta have brown sugar. Man, it's just gonna make me feel all right. Brown sugar is probably what I think it is. Gotta have brown sugar. Man, it's just gonna make me feel so right. Cool. Different than the Rolling Stones version of brown sugar. Yeah. Yeah, a whole different song. This is more of a bluesy type thing. Kind of a laid back, uh, dirty, lazy blues. It's kind of, kind of cool. A lot of their songs uh, that, that weren't big hits uh, among musicians are, are you know, our favorites. You know. Uh, well, like Eliminator sold 15 million copies. Well, Eliminator is, is the album that made them superstars. Out of their 30 million records sold, for, so for that's example, half of it. Eliminator was the was the album that made them the catalyst. Yeah. That, that that put them where they could sell out concerts all over wherever they went. And it is interesting that, uh, as I said, they released their first single in 69, that it was really the 80s where they really hit their stride as hit makers. Mm-hmm. You know, they had uh, some minor hits in the 70s, but 
as he said, Eliminator just put them really solidly on the map. It's one of the biggest acts in the country. And that, you know, uh, all those big songs uh, happened in, in the 80s. Like, Give Me All Your Lovin' mm-hmm. and Sharp Dressed Man and Legs and mm-hmm. Sleeping Bag and all that stuff. Yeah, uh, he, big, he, big hits. Yeah, um, I think the uh, Tush and um, LaGrange were their first songs. And, and, and you kind of... Thought maybe that you might not hear from them again, and then all of a sudden, boom! They're back with the beards. They yeah. didn't really have the long beards. Oh yeah, they came that. in with the beards, right? And then, uh, and then the Eliminator album and the great videos. Yeah, the MTV videos uh, Sh- sure helped. Sharp dressed man got tons of the, mm. uh, MTV video play for sure. They uh, really exploded with the worldwide Texas tour, and they had uh, they brought buffaloes, buzzards. Uh, like a, a steer on stage, <laughs> just uh, and they'd have a uh, the, the stage the trucks have painted with the Texas landscape. So, oh, uh, you know, uh, you know, playing being a trio, man, you know, they really held up all ends. They held up the rhythm section. The guy played tasty leads where uh, the the leads were almost holding up the rhythm section as well. If, if you know what I'm saying, because you know, like a lot of times. Uh, a guitar player will take a lead and you'll lose the rhythm section part. But his leads were kind of like playing good leads and filling up the rhythm uh, the rhythm guitar part as well. Yeah. yeah he's doing a lot of that type of... I, I, I admire that style. That's a sharp-dressed man. Oh, yeah. I do this one. I'm going to do it uh, uh, at Oi Hood on the 14th. Be there. Man, yeah. Yeah, one of their premier songs, no question. This is yeah. off Eliminator, right? Yeah. Almost all those big hits came off Eliminator. I think they even had a song called TV Dinners. Yeah, TV Dinners is a good one. It was off Eliminator, too. It's a crazy music video, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, 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 three guys that hit, hit, hit the big time. Hit gold, and uh, and uh, toured all over. They, yep. and, and it was nice and simple because you just got three guys. You only got three egos to, to deal with, and they, and they worked well together. And, yeah, it didn't seem like a, you know, it wasn't like a Lennon McCartney thing or something like that, you know. And uh, and people would go to their shows. It'd be like a rodeo, a circus, and a rock show all in one. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, it was it was, it was good. Rock and music, man. Texas Pride. Texas Pride. And uh, when they uh, played before the Rolling Stones in Hawaii, they really uh, got big as well. They, their names just kept getting big. They used to just play a little, uh, they'd tour anywhere they could in small town Texas. But you, do you have a version of Joe House Rock? Is there, is there any way you can? Uh, find, yeah, I'll, find I'll, it? I'll, I'll dig that up. Because I've never heard it, and I like I like to I like to hear it. Uh, sure. Maybe, yeah, maybe I'll start. Uh, so, uh, Eric, do you know where they got their name from? I I've always been curious about that, but I've never <laughs> actually taken a look. So they were looking at the posters of the blues artists like uh, ZZ Hill and BB King. Uh-huh. So they were originally uh, ZZ King, but it's like ah, oh, this copying BB King too much. Uh, but BB King was at the top of the charts, so uh, it was be ZZ Top. Uh, okay, that's interesting. I always thought it was the rolling papers that were called tops. Remember those rolling papers? Oh yeah. I, th- I thought maybe that might have something to do with it, but maybe not. But. Or a top hat or <laughs> their hats they wear. And Here's a little bit of their version of Jailhouse Rock. Okay, got to hear it. Get in the way, huh? I like that. Like that. Slide trombone. Can't find a body. Let's run. Yeah, I like the. I like it. Surprised it on the Blues Brothers. I like. Uh, yeah, exactly. I like. Uh, I like the way they. Uh, Use that little riff in, in uh, you know, between the verses. It was pretty cool. And uh, they're uh, in a lot of TV shows and movies too. Oh yeah, yeah. they're they're all over the place, man. 
Well, I was going to say, as long as we were talking about covers, my favorite thing that ZZ Top ever did was their cover of Reverberation, uh, which was by the 13th Floor Elevators, featuring uh, fellow Texan Rocky Erickson, uh, kind of a, a cult artist for sure, but uh, among uh, people that like psychedelic music, uh, Rocky Erickson is a legend. And uh, they there was a tribute album called Where the Pyramid Meets the Eye that came out uh, back in the early 90s, and uh, ZZ Top contributed their cover of Reverberation, and it's pretty awesome. That was it. And I highly recommend this album, Where the Pyramid Meets the Eye, too, because it's, uh, you know, it's got a lot of great people on it, including R.E.M., Jesus and Mary Chain, of course, ZZ Top, and lots of other great artists doing tribute to Rocky Erickson, cool. uh, who was a, a genius songwriter, too. But it, we won't go too much into his story because, uh, you know, that's a whole other show. That's a whole other four-hour documentary, but... Uh, but it, it just if you're a fan of uh, psychedelic music at all, um, or just really good rock music, check out Rocky Erickson's stuff. And uh, I thought it was really cool uh, that ZZ Top uh, was paying tribute to him, too, because they're um, also from Texas, of course. Yeah, cool. They're very influenced by very 13 cool. Floor Elevators. Yeah. Uh, because they're a Texas band very as well cool, from man. Houston. What are, what, are, what are some of the other facts that you have uh, uh, written out there, Devin? So... Uh, Terry Manning was their en sound en engineer. Uh -huh. uh, before that, he did Led Zeppelin three. No kidding. So yeah, having that really made the sound uh, really good. Wow. Um, if we could pull up uh, one of their uh, "Sure Got Cold After the Rain Fell," that, I don't think that gets a lot of airplay these days. Sure got cold after the rain fell. Yeah. Um, so they played Super Bowl thir uh, thirty one, a halftime show in nineteen ninety seven. Very cool. Uh, they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2010. Very cool. Um, they uh, continued to, to tour the world and record new music. I saw them at the Sahara Hotel um, in, let me, I'm, I'm going to get the year here real quick here for you, 1975. And I think they had just LaGrange and Tush out at the time. And... Um, they were, they, I, I, you know, they, they were cool, man. Yeah, they are. Back, back in even '75. That's before the Eliminator thing. Yeah, it is. It, it they really had a sound unlike anybody else. Yes. It, it's interesting how well they blended all these disparate s styles into you know their own unique thing. You know. Agreed. Fans of like blues, fans of rock, fans of like just straight up pop music could all find something to enjoy in ZZ Top. Yeah. Walk off with another man Like taking eyesight From the blind man Wow. You could probably play this, Johnny. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. This really sounds like Mark Lanigan to me. Oh yeah, in my key. After the rain fell, not from the sky, not from the sky. From my it's my key. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a, a cool tune, man. Yeah. Uh, I think I'll I think I'll listen to it. I, I might take your advice on my acoustic set and play some more ZZ Top tunes. Well, yeah, that's kind of got a nice uh, feel, and uh, they got some other great songs like "I'm Bad," "I'm Nationwide." Oh yeah, "I'm Bad" was good. Uh, that's a great song. Uh, "Waiting on a Bus," "Jesus Just Left Chicago." Yeah, that's a very popular song among musicians. On the group, I hear that I hear that song mentioned all the time. 
This has got to be their biggest hit from 1984, Legs. Oh, yeah. You know, it's got kind of a disco type beat to it, you know. And Absolutely, it, yeah. yeah it's a cool music video, too. Same as Sharp Dressed Man, in a, in a way. Because they're spinning yeah. the guitars in this? Mm hmm. Yeah. They were smart to do this, uh, that triplet feel, is what I call it. You know? Yeah. This is another video that got, you know, Tons massive airplay it. all over MTV. And a burgeoning VH1 at the time, I believe, was just out when this started getting lots of airplay. Oh, yeah. They really they discovered MTV. And, and they were like, we got to make some cool videos. Oh, yeah. MT, MTV was something else, man, at the time. I was there at the beginning, and uh, I get off the nightclub at uh, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, and I go home. Turn on MTV. <laughs> and it's a, it's, a hour, it's a 24-7. It was 24-7, yeah. yeah. Like music videos. Yeah. Rock. It was, it was pretty cool. You know, you can't go to sleep after a gig, you know. No. Especially in those days. So he began singing for money at age eight, Dusty Hill, with Very his cool. older brother. All right. And he learned how to play cello at the, his Woodrow Wilson High School. Because he, uh, he grew up in Dallas, Texas. So Yeah, he definitely was a, a, a music guy. And, 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 and of course, you know, it's when they did that documentary and he starts off saying, you know, that it, his, his idol is Elvis, I, I immediately, you know, my ears perked up. Well, uh, his mom would be worked at a diner and Elvis would go in there. When right, she, that's she was the story, in yeah. yeah in, te- in Tennessee, yeah. Uh, yeah. In Tennessee, yeah. Yeah, then before they moved to de- te- uh, Texas. Because Elvis used to play Texas a lot uh, before he became famous. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, well, another thing about uh, Dusty Hill is he's uh, Hank Hill's cousin from uh, King of the Hill. The King of the Hill, no, no kidding. That's uh, in the, one of the plot lines in the oh, episode. <laughs> Very cool. But, well, uh, we, we're going to have uh, our special guest, uh, Daniela, uh, on uh, soon. Uh, 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 do we have time, or uh, how are we doing with that, Eric? Yeah, we're doing great on time. Uh, let's hear one more uh, ZZ Top tune as we go to break. This one, Sleeping Bag, was as big a hit yeah. uh, as Legs, but I really uh, don't remember it half as well. I, um, I, I remember it quite well. But yeah, this was this was a huge hit uh, from Afterburner, the follow-up to Eliminator. And uh, May 15th is ZZ Top Day in Texas. Very cool. Yeah. Same idea with that triplet fill. They were they were smart to use that, enterprise that into their songs. They can make a song about anything: TV dinners, sleeping bags. Yeah, and they did. It sounds <laughs> cool. <laughs> Very cool. Uh-huh. Yeah. They were so smart to, uh, to hold those tunes up together like that. And it helped when they uh, switched their record label to Warner Brothers. Yeah. So that's probably. Yeah. Next week's show, uh, uh, <clears throat> I don't want to jump the gun here, but... Uh, we got uh, an old friend of our uh, the show, Jerry Osborne. He's the guy that brought on all the celebrities uh, on our show. Uh, Dina Martin and uh, every- everybody uh, uh, a year and a half ago or two years ago. And Jerry's been busy doing uh, his own shows in Port Townsend. And uh, we're going to have a special surprise guest uh, from the Elvis world. Because next week's show is dedicated to the king because the anniversary is coming up. August 16th is coming up. So. It's, it's uh, Elvis week. So. Elvis week in Memphis, for sure. No question about it. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to take a short pause, and we'll be back with uh, Daniela from uh, Oyat. Oya. Wherever you go, Alternative Talk 1150 is here for you.
<laughs> I love it. ZZ Top's last single from 2012, I Gots to Get Paid. That's a great, that's a great sound. <laughs> it really is. I got I to gotta listen to that again. That's, that's really cool. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Viva ENT. I'm Johnny the Capo, your host. I'm here with the, my co-host Devin and my producer Eric. And our special guest today is Daniela from Oi Hut Seaside Village. Daniela, say hello to Seattle. Hello, Seattle. All right. You know, it's so no, so nice to have you back on the show. Um, well, we appreciate the opportunity. I love the fact that you're you're so informative. Uh, uh, you, you, you're you got your bullet points and you're ready ready to go. And um, so, um, you know, t- today we're uh, celebrating um, uh, ZZ Top uh, uh, day, day. Do you have any ZZ Top favorites? You know, I, I don't I don't think I have a particular favorite. I do have a little bit of a ZZ Top influence cool. that I remember from my younger years. Okay, so they were one of the first um, videos on MTV. Maybe not the, but you know, back in the day, right when MTV. And I was younger. I won't say how young or <laughs> old, but um, likewise, so all of us girls, we used to, all of us girls used to you know concerts, live concerts were the big thing back then. And, of course, you dressed up to go to the concert. And all of us girls bought those darn little white socks with the lace on them. Right. And wore them with our high heels like the girl in the legs video. Cool. That is so that's, that, my, that's a cool memory. Do you remember that video? That was a great video. It's one of the, uh, yeah, one of the most memorable videos uh, on MTV and and actually one of their best videos they ever did. It is. And it inspired, you know, a generation of um, outfits. Oh, yeah. For rocker chicks back in the day, for yeah. sure. Yeah, rocker chicks. I like that word. It's uh, iconic. <laughs> <laughs> rocker chicks, for right? sure. Yeah, um, I, I was lucky enough to see them in Vegas uh, about 1975 at the Sahara Hotel. And, uh-huh. they, and they had they had Tush out in uh, LaGrange. They hadn't, they hadn't got to Superstar... Uh, status like they did in the 80s with MTV, but uh-huh. uh, yeah, that's the first time that I seen them. And uh, I don't, you know, I seen them one other time in Vegas. And uh, what a great, what a great trio! They ju- they just were fabulous. Oh yeah, they they stayed raw and organic, and you know, even as they progressed and everything, for sure. Right. And w- so, what's happening at Oi Hut? Uh, uh, we know that. Uh, we got the, the best weather coming up uh, for sure. And, uh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. August and September at the beach are, are the best. Yes. And June, yeah, it's a crapshoot. It's just how it is on the coast, right? Yeah, exactly. But this is definitely our peak season is, is just starting. So um, phase two, which is nearly complete, our last home is up. And it's complete with framing. Oh, good. And then, the so because it's the last one, that means the rest of the landscaping is now in place or close to completion. And so that phase is looking good. It is. It looks really great. Construction is just about to move on. So it looks great, um, which means there's also more homes in the rental program. That That's excellent. That's complete. Yeah, so more opportunities to stay at Oiha Bay. So, uh, and then... Moving into phase three, we've got sidewalks cool. um, that are just about complete with street lighting, and we're doing the final grade, and the roads will go in. So we're really looking at probably 30 to 45 days before builds begin there for phase three. That is excellent. And, you know, it's, it, every time I drive in, uh, it, it just it's, there's more stuff going up, and, uh, uh, you know, you got that new... Uh, uh, as you drive in on the left hand side, you got that new game area there with the big yeah. ch- chess board and uh, uh, beach volleyball. Beach yeah. volleyball, which is yeah. really cool. And you got yeah. the and you a got that ground fire pit, all of it. Yeah, that's going to get a little bit of a refresh, uh, landscaping wise as well. You know, we need to to keep things fun and current. And sure. Definitely, the wind is a uh, sculptor at the beach. If, if you have a yard, <laughs> you know, it does its own magic. So we like to always keep up. And then we're just getting ready to move ahead with our uh, waterside lots. We have six lots Ooh, on wow. the canal, oh and gosh. we're going to begin building on those shortly, and those are just going to be 
magnificent homes because you're going to be living on fresh water or vacationing at the beach. So it, it really doesn't get any better than that. So, so, we're pretty excited. so you're actually going to have some homes right there on the canal. Correct. Where yeah. that where that boat launch is right there. Wow. Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I I, uh, I, I have the um, fortune to to live on uh, on part of the canal. You know, and uh, it, it you know it's so cool to get up every morning to that fresh ocean air and be right there uh, on the canal. It, it's just like it's like being in a dream, really. <laughs> yeah, really, the wildlife really. and. Watching the mist, you know, oh. dissipate off the water. It is. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It is. It is. It's, and we've got some fun going. We've got our concert series back, our, our weekend music. Great. Um, and so that's great fun Saturday afternoons, um, early evening, and either in the amphitheater or our fireside courtyard, mm-hmm. which is fun. And we've got some, some good lineups next couple of weeks. So I, I feel like one of them... Uh, one of them is on the show today. That's right. <laughs> That's right. As a matter of fact, uh, Devin, uh, my co-host, he, he's a he's a video guy, and uh, yeah. we're going to videotape it, and we're going to um, uh, be live on the internet on StreetJelly.com at the same time. So, and we're going to start advertising it uh, immediately, uh, so it'll get exposure, uh, not only. Uh, for the people that are there, but anybody yeah. that wants to tune in can uh, tune in to the Oi Hut experience. Yeah, I'm looking forward to going out to Ocean Shores. Uh, it's been a couple of years since I've been out there and see the progress. And we actually thought it might be a good idea to maybe get uh, uh, some short clips of maybe you and uh, s- some of the others at Oi Hut and do a, 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 a short little uh, presentation. Uh, you know what? Grab a let's grab a golf cart and go for a little mini tour. That's what, yeah. And we could videotape yeah. the whole thing and we could, do like a, we could do like a, you know, maybe not live, but do a video, you know, a little video thing mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. share that for sure. Yeah, exactly. And and uh, and then we'll uh, edit it and get it on the internet for you. That sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. So much happening. You know, uh, the world is slowly coming back towards a little bit more normalcy in certain areas. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm. I'm, yeah, I'm, we're, I'm, we're I'm starting. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, we're you know we're just moving along and glad to see uh, life in the village and kids playing and dogs and kites flying and you know the whole whole thing. Yeah, and and, and as far as the homes there that are for rent, uh, uh, what are the sizes? Yeah, like two bedrooms, four. Be- I know you have four and six bedrooms. Do you have do you have smaller uh, houses too? <laughs> There, there's a few one bedrooms which are perfect for a romantic getaway. Cool. And then the the majority of the homes are anywhere from two to four bedrooms, um, with multiple bathrooms. So some of them even have you know two master suites and things like that. So it's great for multiple families. You know, sometimes two two couples get together and pack up the kids and go on a little vacay. And so these houses, the way they're designed, are fabulous. Almost all the living rooms include uh, even a pull out. You know, which is also, great fun when traveling with kids. They love a hide bed. Us, when we're older, not so much. But, you know, <laughs> it was part of a, a vacation. Then we have everything up to, you know, our four-bedroom homes that include a uh, game room where there's been a garage conversion with foosball tables and that's, ping-pong tables. That's really cool. Oh, yeah, All I like playing of, ping-pong, yeah. Yeah, so we've got um, one house that will be coming into the rental program, probably not for about – four or five months um, because it's just a, a, a real custom, but it's got a theater room and a game room. That is sounds wonderful and marvelous. Yeah. So th- yeah. things are just popping and uh, and evolving, and, and fa- phase three is going to be uh, starting soon. And uh, so when you say phase two it is just about finished, you're going to uh, do the houses across the street at the canal, yeah, and then and and uh, will that be a part of phase three? It, it, technically, yeah. Even though in proximity, proximity, it's not directly near. It, however, is part of that you know that phase of the build. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's going to really make it cool. And then um, I I heard a, I heard a, a talk about an event center going in too. You know that is very much in the works. Um, it is something that we are going to plan carefully. And make sure that we get it just right for the utility. But we think definitely having a venue 
um, that we can utilize year round for things like weddings and maybe corporate retreats, right? Um, entertainment, uh, because we need to be able to have it functional with the weather. You know, as beautiful as it is, yeah, it is a coast in the Pacific Northwest, and so it's, it is not all year. And we just want to really make sure that we can create a space that people can enjoy year round to to add to all of the uh, attributes here. Yeah, you know. Um... Uh, you know, during the off season, uh, uh, you know, the weather um, still has a lot of nice days. You know, oh, yeah. it, you know, like you say, it's, it's a, little, a little bit of a crapshoot. But, you know, you can get a I've seen days just beautiful, you know, in the off season there, too. So, uh, uh, you know, it's it, it, having an indoor space like this event center that you're talking about would be really attractive uh, to uh, corporate and uh, and weddings and things like that, for sure. Yeah, like I'm in Seattle, it's pouring rain. It's like, oh, man, you go to the beach, and it's like it's actually really nice and sunny down there, and birds. Sure. Sometimes, and... sometimes. You know, and, and there's no guarantee, and, and so yeah. just being able to have that space for a banquet or a family reunion or whatever, it's going to be really good for our homeowners to boost our occupancy year-round which makes it an even better investment when you purchase here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, uh, uh, I, <laughs> I like to purchase myself. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Just pay a visit out there. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> we, we can talk about it when you're in the golf cart with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good idea uh, uh, to uh, film that. Uh, uh, Devin will film and, uh, and maybe actually... Uh, uh, interview you, and, and we can get a nice uh, clip up on the on the internet, and um, include it on the radio show, and on the uh, group too, and, and on the group. Uh, did you get a chance to listen to to the last show that you were on? By I did I did? I generally hate hearing myself. Uh, oh, you yeah, know, I, I think you one of the. <laughs> I, I did. I actually made it home in time and sat out on my on my patio and and enjoyed the show. I did. Oh, great. Because actually, you know, one of the best guests we've had as far as vo- voice and uh, being informative, you know, uh, uh, like I like like I told you, a lot of times we'll have a, a guest on, and you know, it's, we have to really try hard to get them to stay focused on their to, yeah. to participate. <laughs> well, I think you guys do a good job of making it easy, so thank you. Yeah, we we kind of like just uh, like to have like a a conversation. Uh, and talk about it, you know, casually, uh, you know, make sure that the, all the listeners are getting the vibe of how cool it is down there. Yeah, and that's that's what you have to experience. So I think I think once you you guys get here and we do that, that's part of why you buy here. Is you can buy a, a beach home at a lot of beaches, but you're buying into an idea and a feeling and a concept that what it feels like to be here. And if you're doing it as an investment property. You need to know what your guest experience is going to be. And the only way to do it is actually come down, spend some time, walk the trail to the beach, sit in the amphitheater, you know, sit around the fire table at the restaurant, whatever it is. You need to, the vibe is part of what we're selling. Uh, You know, it sounds kind of cheesy, but it is. It's a feeling we want to share while folks are either living here or on vacation. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when you uh, walk or drive through uh, the village there, you, you can just see the, glow and happiness in everybody's yeah. face. They're just yeah. happy to be there. Yeah. Really. It really, really is. Well, we, we appreciate that. We uh, Something we strive for. Well, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a great feeling be, being on the coast. Uh, you know, I've, I've been there since uh, the 1st of April. And, uh, man, uh, I'm, I'm, it's, it's really, I'm really digging it. I really like it. Good vibrations out there. Yeah, it's, 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 just, it's just cool being there. It's kind of a, a small town... Uh, during the week and on the weekends, you got a, this huge resort. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So you got the best of both worlds there, really. And Labor uh, Day is coming up. And that's yeah, gonna Labor, be big. Yeah, I'm playing. I'm playing. Yeah. I'm playing the amphitheater Labor Day. Yeah, we, so, you know, and once again, you know, fingers crossed for weather. But we've got a, a few different things going on, and um, definitely, you know, go out with a go out with a bang and. And onward, but then we move right into you know September's beautiful here. We don't have a lot of foliage changes on the coast, right? But we have we have bird migrations, and we have 
the sun sets that time of year because the air is different or even more beautiful. There's more moisture in the air, right? In fall. And so the sunsets are more beautiful. And then we have, you know, just those afternoons where there's no wind and yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Fall clam tides. We can get 30, 40,000 people here a day just for clam digging in ocean shores. That's amazing. That is amazing. It's a big, big deal there. And uh, also kite flying there and horseback riding. and Oh, yeah. So yeah. many recreational activities. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no question. Devin's going to be down on the, on the 14th, and we're going to— I'm staying the weekend, yeah. He's staying the weekend, so he's going to get a, a nice taste of, of the shores, and uh, he's going to come out and film the, uh, our concert in the amphitheater, and— uh, we're gonna we're, we're gonna have a great time, Daniela. It's been wonderful to have you on the show. Uh, we got we got to make this like maybe a regular type thing, uh, you know, once a month uh, or something like that. If you're if you're uh, available, um, absolutely, it's a privilege. Next week uh, uh, we're going to we're doing a tribute to to Elvis, and we have a a guy that uh, has written uh, three books on Elvis, and his biggest book was uh, Elvis: The Army Years. His name is Jerry oh, wow. Osborne. And he's yeah. going, he's going to be our be on the show next week, and we have a special guest star from the Elvis world. We don't know exactly who it is going to be, but uh, Jerry's bringing someone on from the Elvis world. Uh, and uh, so, another great show next week, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you on the 14th. Hopefully, I'll be able to pop in and say hi before that. But once again, thank you so much for being on Viva Ent. Thank you, guys, and, and keep up the good work. Your show is very enjoyable. Oh, thank you so much. Well, thank you. <laughs> All appreciate right. that. See you soon. Okay. All yeah, right. So yeah, there you go. You know, it it is really cool there. Uh, uh, like I said, I've been living there since April. Uh, the wind the wind is always going to come sometime during the day. You know, I kind of I kind of have my shorts and my tank top and my flip flops ready to go for when I need a pill. Can't do that at Richmond Beach so much and shoreline. Uh, no, no, not not the, the way you can of the ocean with the smooth sand and. Uh, yeah, this more the sand, the, the sand down by uh, Oi Hut is 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 real smooth. Those beaches down there, very nice, much more than uh, other spots in, in the area. But Eric, how are we doing with time? Well, we've got about uh, five, six minutes or so left in the show here. So Okay. Okay, uh, let's uh, wrap it up with um, uh, uh, I want to let people know that uh, I'm at uh, the Growler's Alley uh, Beer Garden in Pacific Beach slash Seabrook every Wednesday night with my karaoke show. Uh, I will be at uh, Oi Hut September 14th with my, with the, the, the bad boys. Yeah. I'll be... Uh, uh, at uh, Oil Hut again, uh, Labor Day weekend, with Saturday, the Labor Day weekend. And, of course, the karaoke show is every Wednesday, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. So if you're down at the beach, at Ocean Shores, come and see the capo. And I think you got a couple of things to plug. Yes, I do. Um, well, I gotta, first, I want to ask you, have you ever played Guitar Hero, Johnny? A video I, game? No, I never have. Well, you don't need to because you are Guitar Hero. <laughs> well, I hope so. <laughs> Right on. Uh, so August 27th, uh, The Warning and Black Sabbath Experience is playing at Merkwood Public House in Arlington. Cool. Very uh, cool. Uh, I'm going to give the first five people that text my number, uh, 206-225-1004, a pair of tickets. So that's, that's again, two, te text concert to 206-225-1004, and uh, we'll get your tickets for uh, the, the Warning Black Sabbath Experience show. That show doesn't work out for you. We, there's more shows coming up, and if more than five people text me, I'm sure we can find some more tickets. And for other shows. For other shows, because yeah. uh, I'm even going to a show in a couple hours from now. Um, the uh, uh, Nice to be Pretty, Creamsicle, and Space Whales at uh, the Fun House, or oh. Al Alcor Zone in Seattle. So we got some rock and roll tonight at the Fun House. Yep, and tomorrow night, I'm seeing a show too. And Excellent. Yep. Well, uh, so and so don't, don't forget we got we got to do that uh, mini doc down at Oil Hut. Oh, we'll do that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, if you have a documentary we want it made, then yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Or a band video, I, I'd be pretty happy to make some. Very good. So next week, Jerry Osborne, special guest of, uh, from the Elvis World, uh, uh, and you know we've had a lot of uh, guests uh, uh, with Jerry before. And matter of fact, I'm trying to recruit him to maybe. Uh, do it maybe once or twice a month because, you know, he knows all those celebrities. 
all the celebrities that have been on our show throughout the years. Yeah, Jerry was a big part of the show big over the years. So yeah. be awesome to uh, catch back up with uh, Jerry and see what he's been up to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely for sure. Yeah, I'd like to talk to him. Yeah, and you're going to. <laughs> <laughs> and he is, you know, a rock and roll historian, so he's fascinating in his own right. But as you mentioned, he's got uh, great contacts with a lot of the great guests that we've had over the years on the show. And he once deemed me as a rock and roll historian. So That's I, right. I was very... You were a professor, professor of rock and roll. Especially from 55 to 70, I, was, I would say, mm, for me. <laughs> right. Uh, have we? What song have we not played yet by uh, ZZ Top? Like, well, I th- I thought we uh, should play a couple of songs here that uh, ZZ Top uh, featured Dusty Hill on vocals. So uh, this one is from uh, this one is called Pan Am Highway Blues. Cool, and it's from the Tejas album. Big album, so, I think one of the first albums, I think. Yeah, one of their earlier records. They didn't even have the big beards at this point. Right. 1976. Yeah, it was like their fifth album. But I haven't heard this one, but uh, thought it'd be cool to play some couple more tunes here before we get out of here with Dusty on vocals. Very cool. Nice vocal. That, that's Dusty on vocal, huh? Yep. Very impressed. Nice quality in the man's voice. He will be missed. Yeah, will, will be. be. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Viva ENT, keeping the rock and roll alive. Don't forget our group, Viva ENT Talk Radio, Rock, Pop, and Soul. Uh, Devin, say goodbye to Seattle. Bye, Seattle. Uh, Eric C.C. Ryder. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening. If you missed this show on a Thursday evening, catch it again. We're playing it again uh, Fridays at 6 for okay. the time being. Remember that, Devin, so we can we can push that. You're listening to Viva NT. This is Johnny the Copper. We're digging out. See you later. And we're going out with a little more. Going out with a little more ZZ Top. That's right. It, it makes ZZ, sense to baby. close the show with Tush. Ooh, since yeah. it featured Dusty Hill on vocals. And this was their first top 20 hit. Yeah. With their beard harmonics. Right. <laughs> this was uh, back in 1975 when this went to That's the- when I seen them at the Sahara. Number 20. That's awesome. Downtown. I'm just looking for some touch. touch.